Hello guys, this is Fusion Forge, and in this video I will show you how to make scissors in Onshape. So without further ado, let's get started. First, go to your workspace units and select inches. Confirming that, click on the top plane use, and then start a sketch using Shift S. Then use Shift 5 to go directly to the top plane. Press L to make a horizontally constrained line to the origin. In length, make it 5 inches. Then go up by 0.15 inches. Then go back to the right by 0.6 inches, make a diagonal line without any constraints whatsoever, zoom in a little bit, press D for dimensioning, dimension both points of this line to be 0.3 inches apart from each other, and then the distance between both of these lines to be 153 degrees. Now press L and then make a short line just like this one right here without any constraints, press D for dimensioning again, dimension both of these lines to be 148 degrees apart from each other, and then change the length of this line to be 3.5 inches. After deleting this dimension right here, go over to this point, these two points right here, go up here and click on tangent arc. And then for the radius for this arc, make sure that it is 0.53 inches. What you should be seeing is this perfectly constrained sketch right here. Now press C for circle, and then make a circle within the sketch that is 0.2 inches in diameter. Now press D and then dimension it from the origin to be 1.575 inches. To make sure that this sketch is in the middle of these two lines right here, press L and Q to make a construction line and make sure that it has the vertical constraint applied to it. Now press I for a coincident, press on the center point right here and then the line itself. Now press Shift M for midpoint, making this point go to the middle of this line to make it perfectly constrained. And then press Shift E for extrusion. Extrude this sketch by a depth of 2.5 millimeters, displaying one of Onshape's abilities of unit conversion, being able to convert millimeters to inches, and then confirm. Now, pressing Shift 7, we can go and zoom in on this face right here, and then press Shift S. Now, press Shift 1 to go to the front face, or front view, press L, for line, click on this line to make sure that it's perpendicular to the longer line right here, and then drag outwards. Now, make sure that it is 2.2 inches in length. Press D and then dimension this line to the bottom to be 0.015 inches. Then zoom out and go to the end of this line. Press A for three-point arc. Click on both of these points and make sure that this line is, that this arc is tangent to the line. Click and then change the radius of this line to be 0.53 inches. Now, confirming that sketch, zoom out, drag over to the left, right click for orbit, and then go to this line right here. Now, click on plane, make sure that your plane type is set to line angle, and then click on this line right here. Make sure that the angle is 0 degrees, and then confirm. Now, press on plane 1, press Shift S, and now I'm going to show you a new shortcut called N that will take you directly to the plane. N functions just like view normal to, which you can access by right clicking and then selecting. And it differs from shift whatever numbers because it goes directly to the plane that you select. So in this case, it will go directly to plane one rather than if I press shift four, it would take me to the larger right plane. Now zoom in on plane one right here, press L and then make a triangle. Now you want to make sure that this triangle is not um, bound to anything but this point right here, which is tantamount to this sketch right here, sketch 2, which is why we didn't hide it. Now, because they're constrained to each other, this uh, line will always be whatever distance from the bottom that this line is. So using that relationship and then clicking D, dimensioning this triangle to be 60 degrees apart, and then click and drag this up, confirm that sketch, right click for orbit, and then zoom outwards, go and click on the sweep function, select remove, for the faces, select sketch 3, for the sweep path, select sketch 2, and then confirm. So what you should get is this nice smooth face right here. Now. Zooming out, start a sketch on the top plane using Shift S, and then using Shift 5, go to the top plane, 
and then we can show sketch one and high plane one. Now zooming in right here, we want to press L and then make a horizontally constrained line. Does not matter what the length of this line is at this moment, but we want to dimension this line to the center of this circle. We want it to be 0 0.884 inches from the center point of the circle right here. Now we want to press L and then make another line that is not constrained. Press D and then make it 66 degrees from the horizontal line. Now press I and then make this longer line coincident to this point in this prior sketch right here. Now draw a horizontally constrained line from the top of this line right here. That is 0 .0 0 0.083 inches from the top of this line right here. Now that you have that, go to the bottom and draw a tangent arc. So for that, as we did with the first sketch, we want to go up here to the drop down, select tangent arc, click on this point right here, and then drag outwards. We want this arc's radius to be 1.5 inches in length, drag outwards. And then we want to draw a circle with a diameter of 0.7 inches. And then pressing D, we want to dimension it to this line. It should be below this line and with a value of 0.1 inches. And then it should be 2.4 inches away from the center of this circle from the first sketch. Now we want to offset the circle by 0.3 inches. So for offset, you can either go up here and click right here, or you can press O for offset. And then for the value of this offset, it should be 0.3 inches and then confirm. Now what you want to do is click, first escape that, and then click and then drag this line forward to the point where it intersects with the larger circle. Now what you want to do is press M for the trimming tool and then trim away all of this, these longer lines to have this much nicer picture. Now we want to press Shift E for extrusion. Press Instead of pressing Shift 7, you can just right click for orbit. Now we want the depth of this extrusion to be 3 millimeters with the second end position being 0.5 millimeters instead of inches like it automatically becomes. And instead of add, we want to make sure that it's set to new and then confirm. Now press Shift 7 and now use a thing that I have not shown you before, Boolean subtra subtraction. So go up here to the Boolean expression, click on it. We can select the union, subtract and intersect. We're going to go to subtract for the tools. We're going to select this blade right here. For the target, we're going to select this grip. Now we're going to make sure that we have keep tools selected and then confirm. So what this is going to help is making sure that this hole right here exists. Because previously, because it was a new extrusion, it would not have taken into account whatever extrusion we had with this sketch right here. Now we can flay all of the sides of the script. So press Shift F for flay. Select on all of these faces right here. And then for the radius, we want it to be 0 0.05 inches. And then confirm. Now, we want to rename part 1 to be blade. And then we want to rename part 2 to be grip. This can be useful later when we're in assembly, actually assembling our scissors, and in case we messed up somewhere along this point. Now, hiding sketch 1, we can create a compact or comp a composite part between both of these parts right here. And then we can color this blade to be any number or any color we want. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll just use the hexadecimal number FB, FB, FB. And for the grip, I want it to be 3E, 3D, and 3D to make it a much nicer, darker color. For the material for this blade, we want it to be made out of 300 series stainless steel. If it doesn't appear for you right off the bat, you can just select 
you can just type in steel and it'll show up right here. Confirming that, we want to go to the grip and then we want to assign the material of silicone rubber. Now for the inside of this, you can flay the inside of this if you want to. I won't do it just for the sake of this tutorial. So I'm just going to change the inside of this face to be completely red in color. And then I am going to go to assembly. Go up here, either click insert or press I. And then select composite parts, insert two copies of these scissor blades and then confirm. Now press Control M or select up here for make connector, click on the origin and then confirm. Rename this make connector to be the origin mate. Now go up here and select the revolute mate. Now I know it says that the shortcut for the revolute mate is M, but unfortunately that is the exact same one for all of these. So if you did press M, it would automatically go to Fastened Mate. So what we want to do is go up here and then use the Revolute Mate by first selecting the bottom face of the circle and then the Origin Mate to make it go exactly like this. Now use another Revolute Mate doing the same thing as the first. So clicking on the bottom face and then the origin mate. But as you can see, this will just make it directly on top of each other. We want to go up here to reorder items. We want to make the origin mate before the revolute mate. And then we want to flip the primary axis. Now confirm. So what will happen is that you're going to get these scissors right here. As you can see, these are perfect. Now, press Shift 7 to go back into your isometric view. And we are going to make a gear using both of these revolutes. So select Revolute 1, then set Revolute 2. Make sure that the relation ratio is 1, and then confirm. Make sure that when you use this, both of your scissor blades function at the same time. If they don't, click over here and then select Reverse Direction. If you select reverse direction, when both of your scissor blade hands move, then it will instead move both of them at the same time instead of going opposite directions. Now, go over here and then create a part studio in context. For the origin or mate connector, you just want to select the origin right here and then confirm. Okay, so now that we're in this part studio, we can see this holographic version of our assembly. Start a sketch on the front plane using Shift S, then use Shift 1 to get to the front plane, or the front view. Zoom in, press U for projection, right click, and then drag upwards for projection, and then project the insides of each of these circles. It should be perfectly lined up due to our gear and revolute revolutes and then press L make a line that is vertically constrained to the origin. This line should have a dimension of 0 0.361 inches. Press shift M for a midpoint. Click on this line and then click on the origin to have the midpoint constraint, making sure that an equal amount of this line is going both up and down of the origin. Now press H for horizontal constraint and horizontally constrain both of these points to the origin. We are going to do this because if we want to dimension later on it will save us from the projection projections actual length being changed to save our dimension so that we can really force the sketch to be a certain way. Now press L for line and then make a line from this point. Make sure that it is 0.025 inches in length Then go up by 0.015 inches. Then go to then press A for three point arc. 
press on this point right here and then press on this line. This arc should have a radius of 0.4 inches. And it should and then what it might do instead of this is that it might automatically go up here. If it goes up here, you're going to want to do the same exact dimensioning, but add a negative sign in front of the number. So press D for dimensioning, click on this point, and then click on this arc. Now we want this arc to be 0.032 inches from the center point of the, of the line right here. Now what we want to do is press L and then make a line between both of these points right here to make this a completely closed off shape. Now, press the mirror option right here. For the mirror line, select this line right here. For the entities to be mirrored, select on all of these lines right here to make sure that both of these are completely closed shapes. Make sure to have a tinted background right here. Now, deselect and then reselect the mirror feature. Click on this line as a mirror line. And then for the entities, select on all of the lines that you did previously to make a perfect mirror right over here. Now, confirm this mirror and press L. Make a line from the center point outwards, completely horizontal. And then press D, dimension this line to the top of this line to be 0 0.059 inches from the top. We want to mirror this line across to be available both sides and then we want to press shift W to revolve. Now what we don't want is this space to not be applicable for our revolve. So what we're going to do is reselect on this sketch, press L or actually zoom in and then select and then make sure that both of these points are together. Now that we've done this and this entire shape has been tinted darker, we can press Shift W for uh, Revolve, delete the faces, and then select each of the faces of one side. For the Revolve axis, select this midline that we made right here, then confirm. Now use the right click and then use Orbit to go up here. Show the sketch again, press Shift E to extrude. Extrude both of these parts, or both of these sketches right here. Instead of Add, select Remove. Turn on Symmetric. And for the depth, it should be 1.5 millimeters. And then Confirm. Now, select this Insert and go to Assembly. For the items to insert, you just want this, and then Confirm. Now you'll automatically go back to Assembly, zoom out, and you'll find these scissors with the part that you just made right here. Press Shift 7 to go right here, and then select the Revolve constraint again, and then turn on its limits. So now going to the top view, you can click and then drag. This, you can, for this Revolve, you can pick whatever numbers you want for it to be applicable. For the sake of this tutorial, I will set the limit to be 340 degrees and 351.8. Now, what I'm get what I will get out of this, and I can animate it. Now I can confirm it. Press Shift 7. Now, if I go up here, right click, and then select Animate, select Play, I will have both of these scissors playing exactly like I have here. Now, I can reduce the number of steps to 200 to make it go faster. Or, I can so increase the number of steps to 400 to make it go slower. Now, so this was how to make scissors in Onshape. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a good day.